The jellyfish is a live input granular synthesis engine for creating drones, soundscapes and pulses by reshaping real audio. My name is Adam Stark from the Mimu team and in this video I will show you how to get started with the jellyfish and how you can use it to add something new to your music. So when you load up the jellyfish for the first time, this is what you should see after you've logged in. You'll notice that it's an instrument plugin. I've loaded it up here in Ableton Live, uh, but you might be using a different DAW or even the standalone version of the jellyfish. So the quickest way to get started is to take a look at this audio library button here. So we're going to go and click on that and I'm going to choose a sample here, this Piano 07. And you'll hear this pulsing that starts immediately. Now, the first thing I'm going to draw your attention to is this drone and event button, the grain trigger uh, control. So if it's on drone mode, it will constantly produce a sound like it is now. And if you put it into event mode, it won't make any sound at all until you interact with it. Now, you can actually click and drag the jellyfish. And it chooses bits of the sound. But before we go into any more detail, we're going to play this sample and just hear what it sounds like. So the, with the play sample button. So now I'm going to put it back into drone mode and like you can now hear that we're playing back little little uh, pulses or uh, grains of, of this sound and they're, they're happening at different intervals and we're just positioning at different points in the waveform depending on where we drag the jellyfish to. So what we're going to, I'm going to draw your attention now to the grain interval control. So this is the time between these pulses so if I drag it up then they're getting much slower. So you'll notice these are actually in milliseconds between each pulse. So we can make them really, really slow. Or I can make them much, much faster. And we, then we get this kind of smooth drone sound, so it's very uh, atmospheric and we can still kind of obviously drag this around. And then so um, I can kind of drag it back again. And if you double click these, they go back to the default. And there's a tempo sync option here. Um, we're going to come back to that a bit later on. So the next control I'm going to uh, draw your attention to is the grain length. So this is the length of the sound every time there's one of these pulses. So um, what I'm going to do is make this much shorter. So they're happening out at the same interval, but it's a much shorter sound. Or I can make them much longer. So basically by messing with the grain length and the grain interval, I can choose to have these kind of pulsy sounds or I can have uh, if I can make the grain length very short and make the gr uh, uh, sorry the grain interval very short and the grain length much longer we end up with this kind of atmospheric drones and then again we can control the position in the waveform so the next thing we're going to have a look at here is the transpose so um, what we can do is the uh, you can actually transpose this to a different level. So um, what you might do is you might want to pitch this down. So actually, let's put it back into the drone mode. And we can transpose it by a certain number of semitones. So I might just, some of the built-in samples they actually have a, a, the key listed, so you could use that to work out how much you want to transpose it by uh, to get the sound that you want. So um, transposing by semitones lets you kind of re-pitch the sample to where you need it to be. Um, and then if you press this button here, we can also transpose by uh, microtones or microtonally, so this kind of... This gives us a much smoother sound and we can use this as kind of an effect if we want. And again, yeah, double clicking will reset, so... So we can have quite a lot of fun with that. So let's have a look at some of the secondary controls. Now, uh, to do this I'm going to load up a, a different sample, let's load up a, a guitar. Let's just take a quick listen to what this sounds like. So you, you kind of get the idea here. This is what we're now kind of dragging over in terms of... Like I just, we're working with a different sound now. Um, so let's have a look at this panning width here. So let's put this back into drone mode. I'm going to get back into a sort of pulsy control. Now, 
At the moment, all the grains are, are kind of dead down the middle in terms of panning. So what, ha what this panning width does is it randomly pans them. So if I put it to 100%, each grain is now randomly panned somewhere between 0 and 100% width. Um, and if I put it here, it's somewhere between 0 and about 50% width. So what this is doing is it's now adding this kind of width to the sound. And if I now overlap these again, you get a lot of width in the in the drones that you create as well. So this is quite a nice way to create some space. So if I now pull this all the way down, it all disappears into the center. It feels almost, uh, it's actually not mono in stereo, but, but, it's, but it feels very central and sort of dead in the middle. And this feels very wide and kind of all around your head. So let's now have a look at the buffer jitter. So what's happening with the with the sound here is we're actually choosing um, a pulse of sound or a grain of sound from this position in, right in the middle of the jellyfish. So wherever I drag it to, that that de determines where it comes from. Now what happens is that is that is if we choose exactly the same one every time, it sounds very unnatural. So the buffer jitter actually adds a bit of randomness to that position. So if I now take this all the way off. And there's no randomness. When I when I make this grain interval very like that sounds like a very unnatural sound to me because we're just repeating the same sound over and over and over again. So if I now drag this up a bit, just a two percent, we get this like softness and variation and it feels feels nice. And we can even be a bit more extreme with this, so we can it's now really choosing different parts of the waveform quite quite from quite wildly different parts of it. Obviously, so that's a very kind of weird sound, but really the main idea to use this is that is is just to is to kind of um, have a tiny bit of variation in the position of the sound, and you can play with that. So let's go back to a nice pulsy sound again. So here we've got the smoothness parameter. So this is a very smooth and soft and round uh, jellyfish, and what we're going to do, I'm going to reduce this smoothness, and um, what you're going to hear is that that smoothness will disappear, it's going to become much harsher and you see the jellyfish itself become uh, much more kind of rectangular and you have this harsher sound now so this is quite good to create much more of a transient on these pulses so and then if you want the smoothness you can bring that back again and it's got this softness again more of a a pulse to it. And so it really depends if if you're trying to create a pulse or a or something that's overlapping a lot. If you want it overlapping, you probably want to have this softer, softer, softer kind of feel to it. But that's really up to you. So the next one I'm going to draw your attention to is the pitch wobble. So this is going to sound a bit weird. It basically puts a random pitch variation on each of the grains. So I'll do it. Make it really extreme. So this sounds not very good, right? But this is kind of not the idea of this control. So the idea of this control is that we add, let's say, 10 or 20% of pitch variations, very subtle. And then when we overlap the sound very much, that pitch variation acts like a chorus effect. So now if I take it out, that's what we originally had. And now we can add this kind of much more chorusy effect in. And we don't want to do this much. That's, too, that's way too much, but somewhere in here, you can add like a real kind of nice chorusy effect to things, and that gives it a, um, uh, a, a, makes it feel really thick and kind of interesting and complex. One of the coolest features of the jellyfish is that you can actually record your voice or any instruments you've got directly into the jellyfish's audio buffer and then use the jellyfish to actually take that sound and play it back out of time and create some strange soundscape or pulsy vibe with that uh, sound that you've recorded. Um, so this is a really fun, creative way to use the jellyfish. So let's take a look at how to do that. So what we need to do is to get audio into the plugin itself. Now, the plugin is an instrument plugin, so it's not sitting on an audio channel where audio is directly coming into it. So what we need to do is actually get audio into the Jellyfish via a sidechain input. Now, in Ableton Live, here's the Jellyfish plugin, there's a sidechain drop-down menu, and it's just as simple as selecting the input you want. I've got a, I've got a voice channel, so I'm just going to select that, and now you can see my voice is coming in here into the plugin. If you're using a, a different DAW, um, there's almost certainly a different way to do this, and it's it's possible in most um, DAWs, and um, you just need to find the way to get sidechain audio into the plugin. 
So once you've done that and you've got audio coming in, you can just literally hit this record button and that record button will then record your voice and take audio in just like this. Take the audio in just, just, just like, like this. So you can kind of use that then to kind of repurpose, uh, you know, out of time and uh, in any way you want. So this is like a really fun way to kind of just mess with your voice and something I really like doing as, as um, anyone who knows me will uh, attest to is just like take a sort of very big reverb and just stick it straight after this. You can create some very nice. So you can kind of then really kind of create these big spacey atmospheres or if you put it into drone mode you can actually really mess with your voice in a kind of different way. And then anytime you're done with it, you can just hit the clear button uh, and then you can record a new sample like this. Yeah. So that's how to do live audio capture into the jellyfish. So one of the things you might be wondering is how would I go about actually playing the jellyfish, you know, with like a MIDI keyboard, for example, so I can actually really play back these sounds in, uh, in, in a way that I could perform them. Um, so one of the ways you can do that is using uh, the uh, MIDI marker feature. So I've, I've actually got a MIDI keyboard here connected and it's got some notes that are coming in. You can actually see here that those notes are coming in. So what you can do is you can use this learn button here and if you hit learn, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to play um, a middle C here. And there we go. We've got now this C3 marker, which has come up. Now I'm going to hit unhit learn. Now, you see here it says one MIDI marker repitching. So what that means is that it's going to take this sound that we've got here. And then if I play different notes, it's going to repitch that sound according to how far it is from that note. So uh, let's take a look. So we've now got this kind of re-pitching effect that we can use to play back the sound and you know we can uh, hit learn and we can move our marker to somewhere else, maybe to, to this one, and now it will actually play back this part of the sound. So this this way we can kind of map a MIDI marker to the uh, to a specific part of the sound, dial in the grain interval and the whatever sound we want to do on here and then we can play it back with our keyboard. But this isn't it. There's, a, there's, there's more to this as well. So if we hit learn, I've got C3 here, and I'm going to move my C3 to here, to this note. And then I'm going to move the jellyfish to here, and I'm just going to now play another note. I'm going to play a D. And I'm going to move the jellyfish to here. So you'll, you'll notice now, it says two MIDI markers, region selection. So now there's two MIDI markers. What it's going to do is it's actually going to alternate between them. So let's turn learn off for a second. If I play the C, it will play there. And now, if I play D, it's not going to re-pitch anymore. It's going to play a different part of the waveform. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit Learn. I'm going to just carry this on. There's an E. And then I'm going to put this on an F. And this on a G. So th these aren't actually a, a C, D, E, F, and G. But these are ways for us to select parts of the waveform and play them back with our keyboard. So now I'm going to I'm going to play these. So this is a really cool way to actually get bits of a sound that we like and then we can kind of find a, a cool sound that we like and then play different parts of that waveform back mapped to our, our MIDI keyboard. And then we can just sort of always dial this in to create some, maybe this is a pulsy sound. So we can create some kind of fun effects there with this and uh, it's a sort of yeah really nice way to quickly map things to our uh, MIDI keyboard but if you hit learn you can also click on one of these and hit backspace and delete it and then you can just move through and you can easily delete them go back to having absolutely no markers at all. So that's how you control the jellyfish with your MIDI keyboard.
So there are actually a few different ways that you can get audio into the Jellyfish, aside from just using the record button or using the audio library. So if you look up here, there's the load button. So if you click on that, you can just get taken up and you can load an audio sample in directly. So I've got this piano.wav, I'm going to load that straight in and there it is. And we can, we can play with it. Um, alternatively, I'm going to hit the clear button. I can now, I've got the same audio sample on my desktop, I can just drag and drop that straight into the plugin. And we've got um, that loaded in, ex in, in exactly the same way. So if you've got a whole load of audio samples and you just want to see what it's like and you want to mess them up, then just drag them into here and play with them, then find the next one, and it's a really good way to just experiment. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take a look at some of the playback modes here. So um, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to look at this reverse button. And what this does is it actually plays the, the grain backwards. So, for every, so every time there's one of these sort of grains or pulses, it plays it backwards. So just to kind of, I'm going to accentuate this, play a very long grain. So that's playing forwards. Now if I play it backwards, you'll hear those transients all become, you know, more like swells. So. So this is a really nice way to make things much softer, you know, and so you can kind of lose the transients in the sound uh, much better using the, the reverse button than, than when it's off. So another thing we can do, um, so I'm gonna, we're going to go back now, create a bit more of a droney sound. So we've got this grain position, and then we can switch it from manual to auto. And what that's going to do is actually going to play the jellyfish um, on its own. It's going to move it on its own. So you need to be in drone mode for this to work. So you need to move from event mode to drone mode. And now you can sort of see this is playing back on its own. And I can control the speed here as well. I can make it much faster. Or really, really slow. I can then move to, I can make it backwards. It's just looping backwards now. I can go to random walk. So with this one, basically it's going to go to a random position and then just move to a different position. And it's just going to walk around randomly around the waveform. And then with random jump, it's going to go to a random place and it's just going to appear somewhere else, like teleporting itself. And we can make that happen really fast and get some kind of... Oh, there we go. A feeling like it's kind of, the, the waveform's kind of cut up into little pieces. And then finally, we've got this um, LFO option. So basically, this allows us to let's speed up. It swings back and forth. It feels like it's kind of on a swing, which has kind of got this momentum to it, which is nice. So the jellyfish is really good for creating pulsy sounds, a little bit like this. But it might be that what we want to do is actually synchronize that pulse with the uh, tempo of our track. So um, let's have a look at how to do that. So if you go down here, you'll see this tempo sync button. Now before I press it, the grain interval is in milliseconds. But if I press it, now it changes and I've got it, it's in its a 16th note. And then I can change this to be like an eighth note or like a quarter note. And I can just sort of synchronize to the... Um, host transport. So um, because it's quite difficult to hear in context on its own, um, I'm going to play back a little sort of drum loop from Ableton and then uh, we can hear it in uh, context. So let's play that drum loop. So now it's playing that back. I'm going to put this into drone mode. And you can hear this is now synchronized. And this is where we might want to use this smoothness and make a sharper sound. And then we can change this this interval as well. So we can change it from an eighth note to that's like a, a sort of more of a triplet type feel we've got there. Um, we've got like a sort of sixteenth note. And then we can also use the kind of um, sort of automatic things as well. So we've now got this kind of. This is how we can kind of create these like mo drones with like a lot of movement in them and pulses and synchron synchronized to what we're doing and have them create something that's quite complex but also really tightly locked to, to the rest of our track. So when you create something with the Jellyfish, you can actually save it as a preset and then reload that at any time. So if you 
record a bit of audio in that you really like or you dial in a sound that you like or you've set up a sort of some MIDI markers or anything that you really like, you can save that as a preset and then just bring it back at any time and use it. So I've set something up here where I've got three MIDI markers set up that I can use um, for playing back and, and I, and I want to save this. So to do that, you just go to save and you do save preset. You can also save as an audio file here, but that will just save the audio. But I'm just, we're going to look at the preset here. So you hit save preset and then you can either choose an existing group, so it's one of the groups that are already there, or you can choose a new group. I'm just going to call this My Presets. You might call this whatever you want, so you can make a, as many groups as you want, so you could categorize them. So um, I'm going to call this, um, this is my synth thing, right? Not very creative name, but that's what it is today. So hit OK. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to delete these markers I'm going to clear the, the, the audio waveform. I'm going to just sort of reset all of this to the to the beginning. I'll, show you, I'll just mess them up. You know, everything's going to be different. And then if I go into the presets here and I can go and find my presets, here's my synth thing and I double click on that and everything loads back up just as it was. So you can then go in here and, and create your own little library of presets and just, you know, anytime you come up with something you like, save it in here recall it and that's going to be your way of really kind of hanging on to those little things that, that you create and making sure that you've got them for your future music making. So another way that you can interact with the jellyfish is by MIDI mapping to its parameters. Now I'm not going to do a, a MIDI mapping tutorial here um, because every piece of software is different and also I think that's been covered in a lot of depth by other people elsewhere. Um, but I did want to highlight one parameter that's very specific to the jellyfish and um, I think you know helps us have a much better experience when MIDI mapping to it. So you'll notice that if we're in event mode, um, what happens is that when we click with the mouse, it, it starts to make a sound and when, when I let go of the mouse it stops. So it has this idea of it being activated and then deactivated. And this is actually a parameter that you can MIDI map to. So um, if we go down here in Ableton Live and we open this uh, little um, box here, what we get is all the parameters. And you can see there's this activated parameter. And there's all the other parameters as well which you can MIDI map to. But what I'm going to do is just show you how we can MIDI map to that. So I'm going to um, go in, I did Command M, so go into MIDI map mode. And then I'm going to click on the parameter. And I'm going to now press this button here on the my MIDI keyboard. And that's now mapped there. It's a, it's a MIDI CC control. Uh, this one's actually a momentary control as well, which is uh, well suited for this idea. So if we go here now, you can see that now when I, when I press this uh, MIDI controller, the sound will start to come out. So we've got it, it's now activated. So I've now got like a control surface way of accessing this parameter exactly. So that's really, really useful if, I, if I'm going to build uh, some kind of MIDI map version of this and I have like a control surface. So you, that just lets you switch it on and off in a really easy way. We can also map another parameter. So for example, like the, the buffer position. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click on that there. And I'm going to turn this knob here. And so now I've got control over the buffer position here. And so now we can use these two things together. So that's how we might set up like a, a MIDI keyboard interaction for the jellyfish. So I hope that gave you a good introduction into how you might use the jellyfish for your music making. If you've got any questions at all, drop us a line at support at memugloves.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you next time.